Recently, the CAA released a call for input on their ideas of how to change the UK drone rules to what they feel may better suit the UK. We held a live stream with a deep dive into the facts and full details. However, some of you have asked for a quick recap, so this will be our CAA drone rules changes in under five minutes. In fact, we'll even put a timer on screen once we start. The sections we're going to talk about are these, so you can also fast forward to find out for the input that you want. And there is a link in the description to our full live analysis of this, but for now, let's start the timer. Okay, how we got here. First up, and how we how did we get here? The well, the UK were all set to remain as part of the EU or an EASA member state, even when we knew about Brexit. However, at the last hour, the UK decided that it will leave the EASA. So we launched the same drone rules, but mirrored them for the UK. So although we have very similar rules to the EU, they are actually a UK version, which is partly why we cannot use sea label drone benefits here. A couple of years later and the UK CAA and the government have decided that these rules could be changed to suit the UK better, just when we got used to them. There will be a large public consultation later this year where the CAA will set out their concepts and plans for the future use of drones. This will have an impact across everything, including recreational and commercial drone flights. We'll be covering the consultation in full here in Geeksvana, so if you are new here, do hit that subscribe button to find out more when it drops. In the meantime, the CAA have put out what they titled as a call for input. This is a document with the basic concepts and ideas, explaining the areas they're thinking of changing and asking us for our feedback on those ideas. It's incredibly important that we all get involved and give our responses to this. We're currently at a stage where the CAA are forming their concepts and making decisions on changes. So we need to respond about how we feel. Some of the highlights in terms of the changes includes the CAA are looking at changing, simplifying the airspace categories in the UK. So we might see the open and specific categories go and instead see basic and advanced descriptions instead. This is designed to make things more intuitive for the end user. What are your thoughts? A review of the sub 250 gram benefits and whether or not they should continue and if any form of remote ID etc should be included in that class is, is coming. If you enjoy flying your sub 250 gram drone with the range of benefits we enjoy in the UK, you need to ensure you respond to the call for input. There are also particular focuses on privacy and the potential need to protect anyone against being recorded when they do not want to be. We knew that one was coming. Remote ID has reared its ugly head in this report officially for the first time. The CAA have asked for input on whether or not the UK needs remote ID and what form it should take. They're currently looking at a hybrid version that will record all of your flights on a central system as well as giving out pilot location. Do you want this? Get responding to the CAA. Geo-awareness is a term that could become even more restrictive than remote ID. The concept is to have every drone manufacturer implement a strict geofence system on drones to stop them flying in or taking off in things like FRZs or restricted airspace. This could have a lot of knock-on impacts. See our main show for more on this. There is a new version of the sea label system suggested, essentially a label for the UK which focuses on weight. This could allow us more freedoms with C1 labeled drones like the DJI Air 3, but in my opinion we need to be very wary of unintended issues when we all rush to agree on this one. We need more information. Model aircraft could receive a different classification to mainstream drones and therefore not have to comply with all of the rules designed to keep the camera drones within security and safety limits. How they might find the line between Model RC and drone descriptions would be interesting. It's worth a response if you're part of the wider RC community for sure. Remote pilot competency and how the CAA deliver their documents is also up for review as it is a new digital system forcing a new drone owner to register when they first turn on their drone. This was a very quick review highlights and there is a lot of information on the main live show so I do recommend you go over and actually have a look at the topics in more depth and the ones which are important to you. How to respond, there's a link in the description to the CAA site where you can log your responses. They are using multiple choice questions and then a box to enter more information. Be careful because a lot of questions involve a wide range of information. I recommend you read the full document, perhaps even what with our stream in the background before you actually respond. There we go, well within the five minutes. Coming up on Geeksvana, we'll be running a few short live shows to focus on each of the key topics like sub 250 grams, etc., and how it will impact that particular 
the class and discuss what we think might happen and should happen in terms of drone rule changes. So again, if you're new here, do hit that subscribe button. Sean out.